Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak at the uh, Logix, uh, Logix Supergroup. Those, those meetings online are kind of one of a uh, few very bright things in this green times, I think. Uh, and thanks to uh, you, Damon, Damian in particular, for, for hosting this. So as, as Damian said, I will be presenting joint work with uh, Rafa Urbaniak. We've been working on it for, uh, for quite a while. Uh, and uh, hopefully it's uh, it's coming it's coming it's coming to an end in some in some way um, but let's uh, let's see what new comes comes up during during the discussion perhaps so uh, first i will uh, recall yablo's paradox so that we are all on the same page although i assume uh, some of you if not everybody is familiar with with yablo's paradox then I will uh, recall how to put uh, the parlance of Yablo sentences and sequences of Yablo sentences in formal arithmetized setting. Uh, I will uh, get you through the idea how to perhaps deal with the paradox if you want to be a finitist. Then I will tell you why this idea, the naive idea of finitism that is trying to incorporate the old idea of potentially infinite uh, has some flaws and how we can repair that by uh, interpreting quantifiers in a, in a certain sense model way by accessibility relation. Then I will tell you how in this correct interpretation of finitism the Yablo paradox strikes back and if uh, time permits we'll have to ask them if time permits, then I will make some remarks on semantics, ontology, and how this entire work, what, what, what this entire work might, might say about finitism in, uh, in general. Uh, I, I wanted to say that I'm okay with uh, interrupting me at any point, but uh, uh, I'm also okay with sticking to the uh, policy of uh, asking questions that Damian, Damian presented. So off we go. Uh, Yablo paradox appears uh, when we consider uh, an infinite list of sentences uh, such that each sentence on the list says that all of the guys behind uh, this particular one are false. So y0 says that all yk's with ind indices higher than zero are false, y2 says that all yk's with an index higher than two are false, and so on and so forth. So yn says for any k strictly bigger than n, yk is false. And <clears throat> let's reconstruct the natural language reasoning that leads to a, to a paradox here. So uh, is it, let's first ask the question, is it possible that any of the yn's is, uh, is true? So uh, let's assume that it is, so it holds. So suppose yn, uh, then it means in particular that for any j bigger than n, uh, yj is true. n plus one is false and for any j strictly higher than n plus one yj also uh, doesn't hold but then this is exactly what y n plus one expresses so it holds so that's a contradiction with the assumption that y n plus one doesn't hold so this must mean that for all n's y n must be false oh sorry uh, but then it means that there, is, there exists a k higher than n uh, such that yk holds for, for any n. But then you assume that yk holds and you repeat the entire reasoning and you get to a contradiction again. So we've got a paradoxical situation that the uh, uh, existence of sequence uh, leads to. And now there are, in a formal setting, uh, actually what, what, what we've done here was a very sloppy thing because we uh, either used uh, some infinitary rule or we used some strong assu assumptions uh, governing the behavior of the truth predicate when we are doing this this reasoning and there are if you want to formalize it then there are some background assumptions that might play a role uh, in deriving or uh, inability to derive uh, contradiction from the from the sequence uh, so uh, one possible assumption that you can impose uh, on your theory is to have uniform disquotation for the truth predicate over the Yablo uh, formulas. So you might assume that for any x, 
uh, Yablo of X. Uh, so what was denoted as Y with uh, uh, subscript N uh, in, the previous, in the previous slide holds if and only if this Y of X is true. Another one, you can uh, simply assume that for, you can simply assume a set of sentences for all natural numbers N, you can assume that Y of N holds if and only if Y of N is true, or you can simply take, uh, you can simply add omega rule to, the, to your system of, uh, of deduction, which says that basically for any N in omega, you can derive phi of N, then you can derive that for all X by uh, phi of X. And uh, I will come back to those, to those rules because depending on which one we assume, uh, we might uh, the, end up uh, having to say that actually there is no contradiction of, or that there is for this or that particular uh, reason. Uh, but irregardless of the formalized rules, one of the ideas to get out of the paradox uh, is to look at some finitistic ideas from the foundations of, uh, of mathematics. So uh, expressed in a uh, vague way, the idea might, might say something like that. If, if, the, the, if the world is finite, yet possibly potentially infinite, but if it's actually finite, then in some sense, and we will specify it in due course, there are only finitely many Yablo sentences as objects in our uh, universe of, of this course. And then the, basically if they are numbered, then the last one that says that all of the guys with higher indices on the Yablo sequence are false, then it is uh, trivially true. And perhaps there is a way to formalize uh, this reasoning and say that, well, uh, uh, apart from the usual debate on circularity or lack of circularity in the, in the paradox, one of the things is that Yablo uh, sequence involves infinitely many sentences. Uh, therefore, it has something to do with infinity and finiteness. And maybe when we look at the assumptions concerning the ontology of our uh, um, the, the on, on ontology of the universe uh, of, uh, of of numbers that can serve as objects that the uh, uh, sentences are referring to in arithmetized uh, setting, then we might see some some deeper uh, the the deeper relations. Uh, concerning concerning the paradox uh, itself. So the challenge here obviously is to make it a non-vague idea but to try to m make a formal sense of at least arithmetic uh, in some finitistic setting and uh, if we drop uh, strict finitism uh, as an idea and try as I as I as I said in the beginning try to refer to uh, this uh, weak finitism in the sense of, uh, um, in, in the similar sense that some people are referring to Aristotle, uh, that there is a meaningful notion of infinity, but it is always a potential infinity. Uh, and we should be able in our ontology to say that there could always be more things, but actually there are always finitely many things, but we, for example, do not happen to know how many, uh, how many exactly. Uh, one of one of the motivations uh, that people had when they were uh, thinking about this strategy, not referring to Yablo paradox, but to the, referring to to some other issues in logic. So the, the motivation that some people had were basically foundations of computer science. So think of, uh, of 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 computer memory. So in some abstract setting you might say that the memory you have to perform all the operations, e.g. arithmetical operations, combinatorial operations more generally, or the computational operations in, in, uh, in, in most general sense, then you always have only finitely many resources, but uh, a priori, you can always buy a little bit more of memory. You can enlarge the universe of objects that you, that you need. And this is how people connected the ancient idea of potential infinity to the foundations mm, uh, of, uh, of computer science in the sense of finite, finite model uh, theory. So let's, let's, let's try to take a look at how this, this would work. First, coming back to uh, formalization of Yablo, Yablo sentences. So since uh, our analysis happens in a strictly formal setting, 
then I'd like to first recall how, uh, how one arithmetizes and formalizes uh, Yablo sentences and uh, how, you, uh, how you get uh, to, to know that actually you can meaningfully speak of uh, Yablo sentences as objects existing in your, uh, provably in your, in your theory. So, uh, first, uh, even if you have a first order theory in an arithmetical language with truth predicate added to your uh, signature, and assume you, you, the, 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 the Robinson arithmetic is included in your theory, then for any formula with two variables, there is another formula psi of x such that your theory proves that psi of x is equivalent to phi, uh, the phi of x and the number of, of psi of x, right? So this is basically the diagonal lemma uh, for formulas, not with one, but with two vari uh, variables. So you can, you can prove diagonal lemma for as many free variables as, uh, as you want. And I will be sometimes using the dot notation. So if we see a formula that says for any x or there exists x such that p of phi of dot x, then it will always mean like take universal quantifier for a moment here, that for all x's, uh, the result of substituting a numeral denoting x for a variable that is free in the formula phi has property phi, right? So this is to exclude the situation in which you have uh, an x here and uh, when you do the uh, ghetto corners around then what you have in here is, uh, is a syntactic object that has a fixed name because it's this particular free variable uh, x17 or something. We want this variable to be uh, uh, in the range of this quantifier and the dot is just a, a vehicle for that. And now a definition, what we will call the Yablo formula in our uh, arithmetical nice theory. So y of x will be a formula if our theory is able to prove that for any x, y of x is actually equivalent to what we want Yablo formula to be equivalent to. So to the statement saying that for any w strictly larger than x, y of w is not true, right? And in order to have this w, uh, this, this w being range of this quantifier, then we have to use the dot the dot notation. And Yablo sentences will be uh, basically substitutions of uh, uh, formulas Y, such as here, with standard numerals N. Okay, and now uh, Graham Priest uh, 23 years ago proved that uh, if uh, theory is nice in the sense presented, presented above, then there exists a Yablo formula in, uh, in, in, in T, and you do it by, by applying the diagonal lemma. You simply take the, the, the formula that says for any w over x, the result of substituting the name for w in the place of the free variable x in the formula with the number y is not true, right? So by the diagonal lemma, there is a formula, I think of this psi of x from the, from the general form of the diagonal lemma that is equivalent exactly to, uh, to this formula where for every occurrence of y you replace every occurrence uh, of y you, you replace with y, uh, y of x, which by then reading of the substitution operation means that t proves exactly what it needs to prove about y. In other words, that y, uh, that uh, sorry, that Yablo sentences probably exist. So we can meaningfully uh, speak of, of Yablo sequences in uh, formal arithmetized settings. And uh, then uh, we can uh, start the investigation on consistency and omega consistency of those theories and investigate where the paradox lies, if it lies anywhere, actually. So uh, to recall, the theory T is omega consistent. If you cannot find a formula such that your, your theory proves the negation of phi of every natural number n, yet it simultaneously proves that there exists a witness for formula phi, right? If, if there is such a formula phi, then your theory is omega consistent, uh, omega, sorry, omega inconsistent. And if you cannot find such a, such a formula, then your theory is uh, uh, omega uh, consistent. Okay, uh, and now let's add some sets of sentences. So, uh, I want to discuss the disquotation uh, schema. So uh, in order for us to be, to be able to meaningfully say that uh, we are discussing truth theories, 
Then the minimal requirement is that we include something like this quotation scheme for sentences from the language of arithmetic. So uh, L here denotes the language of arithmetic, phi are arranging over sentences of this language, and uh, arithmetical disquotation is the set of sentences that says of every arithmetical sentence that phi holds if and only if phi is true. And Yablo disquotation will be a uh, set of uh, disquotation uh, instantiations for uh, Y ends being Yablo sentences, i.e. this Y with uh, standard numerals N. So now let's define formally theories we will be uh, discussing. So first take PA, add the truth predicate. Now nothing governs it apart from the fact that we make it inductive. So we allow the truth predicate to occur in uh, formulas to which induction scheme applies. And then PAD will be simply simply this theory together with arithmetical disquotation and Yablo disquotation. And there is yet another theory of interest that is PAD minus, which is the same as PAD, but we do not allow truth to be uh, to be uh, an inductive uh, an inductive relation. And, and now the results proven uh, mostly by Jeff Ketland in 2005 are that actually if you add to your theory only those sorry, the, this uh, also called local arithmetical, uh, sorry, local Yablo disquotation, uh, by which I mean uh, the, the set of sentences, uh, the set of Tarski equivalences for all Yablo sentences, not one general uniform uh, disquotation for uh, all x's and all substitutions of Yablo formula, but if you discuss, if, if, if you assume a Tarski scheme only for Yablo sentences, then such a theory is actually consistent, yet obviously by this uh, the, the natural language reasoning almost, it is omega inconsistent, and you can additionally prove that if you add induction for the truth predicate, you have to uh, uh, apply compactness uh, once more and to uh, look at the models a little bit more carefully than PD obviously is also uh, consistent. So one might say that actually, well, the paradox here maybe lies more in natural language than in, uh, in, in, in uh, logic proper. Uh, and uh, the reason for that actually uh, obviously has to do with uh, non-standard models. So the way, so the showing that PAD is omega inconsistent is like repeating the, the standard, uh, the standard reasoning. But the fact that uh, that it is consistent, uh, you do uh, following thing. You take a non-standard model of PA, uh, you define a term, and that basically refers to uh, the Gödel number of y of uh, of x with uh, x under the dot operator. Uh, then by uh, overspill. Uh, uh, a principle in, in arithmetic, you have to have non-standard numbers such that the value of the term T on the argument B is equal to C. Uh, and then you simply define the interpretation of truth predicate on your model M as uh, the set of sentences of uh, language of arithmetic that are true in M together with number, number C. Now, Thanks to the fact that you include all true arithmetical sentences in the interpretation of truth predicate, your model together with this, uh, with this set S satisfies arithmetical disquotation. And now you can see that for any natural number in omega, so for any standard number, your model satisfies the principle that there always exists an X strictly larger than, than this N, such that y of x belongs to the interpretation of the truth predicate, and it is exactly this this c, right? Uh, yet simultaneously, for any uh, standard uh, standard number, standard natural number, y of n is uh, false in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, in your model. Uh, but the standard y ends are also not included in the in the interpretation of the truth predicate. So for any standard n, your model says that y ends are not true, right? So therefore, Yablo disquotation uh, is also satisfied if we take the local principle, right? Because 
all y n's are false and all y n's under the scope of the truth predicate are false. So in the model, we have the equivalence between all the y n's for all the standard uh, natural numbers n. Uh, so the model satisfies Yablodis quotation. Uh, you might observe that what fails here is the uniform Yablodis quotation, and that's not, uh, not, uh, not by accident. And uh, the, the thing I already mentioned, uh, if you take the uh, uh, extension of your truth predicate, you check that induction holds after putting the last uh, Yablo sentence for any finite fragment of, uh, of PAD and apply compactness, you can see that PAD is also, uh, is also consistent. The only difference between PAD and P PAD minus in this context is that in PAD minus, to show that it is consistent, you simply can make any non-standard model of PA model of uh, Yablo disquotation if Yablo disquotation is taken locally, if you don't assume that truth predicate is inductive. And then here, it might be the case that you turn into some other yet elementarily equivalent model, right? Because you use compactness, so you only prove that there, is, there exists a model and you can always take the theory of the model that you start with but it might not be the same model that you started with. So uh, on a semantic model theoretic level, those theories differ a bit, but for the consistency, uh, uh, consistency considerations concerning the local Diablo disquotation, there is, there is no, uh, no difference. Uh, yet, although PAD includes uh, some more, more assumptions uh, than PAD minus or than PA, of course, then it, it is still a conservative extension of PA, which means that together with Yablo and the assumptions on the truth predicate that we impose, uh, we cannot prove more arithmetical sentences uh, because uh, assume that you have a sentence that PA doesn't prove, we want to show that PAD also will not be able to prove it. So if PA doesn't prove phi, then PA and the negation of phi is consistent. Uh, and now uh, take a non-standard model M of PA such that it satisfies not phi. By the argument before, you can find an elementary equivalent model M prime such that on M prime, you can find an interpretation of the truth predicate such that it satisfies PAD. But then it must mean that PAD doesn't, doesn't prove phi because if this is a, a, a model of PAD and the model is elementary equivalent, elementarily equivalent to M, then it also cannot satisfy phi, okay? So that's, that's the, that's the, the Mm, the background for uh, for formalizing local Yablo disquotation, and to see what actually yields contradiction on a, a properly formal level for uh, Yablo paradox, let's take a look again at uh, what I called uniform Yablo disquotation. So uh, Tarski scheme uh, applied to all formulas to all x's uniformly for all the uh, Yablo Yablo formulas. Then if we take such a, such a theory, uh, I mean, we take PA with the truth predicate and we add the uniform Yablo disquotation, then this theory is inconsistent. Here we can see uh, the trace of paradox. So assume you work in, uh, in S. By the existence of Yablo's, uh, Yablo formulas in nice theories, uh, your theory proves that for any X, Y of X is equivalent to what it should be equivalent to. Uh, uniform Yablo disquotation gives you that for any x's y of x holds if and only if for any w higher than x uh, y of w doesn't hold uh, because you take out the truth predicate from the from the formula uh, unravel what y of w uh, expresses so y of x is equivalent to for any w higher than x there exists something higher than w such that y of z is actually true Again, by Yablo disquotation, you can uh, turn it uh, into a sentence uh, expressing only uh, whether some formula uh, Y holds or not holds and not necessarily is true or, or false. But then uh, you take that all together and you've got that instead of speaking of for any W higher than X, there exists Z higher than W such as Y of Z, you simply say that for any, for any X, y of x holds if there exists uh, w higher than x such that y of w holds, but this basically uh, makes it, uh, makes it a, uh, a contradiction since what uh, y of x expresses uh, under this quotation 
uniform discretization scheme is that for any w higher than x, yw doesn't hold, right? So we've got, got a contradiction under the uniform Yablo, Yablo discretization. Another way to reach the inconsistency back from the natural language reasoning is to add omega rule to your theory. So take the uh, PA together with arithmetical disquotation, Yablo disquotation, and add omega rule to it. So allow yourself for uh, infinitary reasonings. Uh, then uh, if you internalize and formalize the standard reasoning that we were making at the very, very beginning, then you can show that for any standard natural number, the theory uh, proves that Y of N doesn't hold, but then uh, by uh, even local local disputation, uh, this means that your theory proves that y of n is not true for any standard uh, standard n. Apply the omega rule to the fact that for any n you prove something. So you have that for any x, uh, y of x is not true. And in particular, under Yablo disputation again, sorry, before Yablo disputation, in particular, uh, all uh, y of x is for all x is higher than 23 uh, are not true. So in particular, y of 23 holds, but uh, by internalized standard reasoning, we've, we've derived that y of n uh, probably doesn't hold for any n. So this is a contradiction yet derived in a, in a slightly different, different way. So in the classical setup, uh, if you are able to prove the existence of Yablo sentences as syntactic objects in your theory, then there are theories with weak truth assumptions and in standard first order logic that uh, are still consistent, so no paradox arises, sorry, over there. Yet they are omega inconsistent if you assume local disquotation for Yablo sentences. And there are two, basically two formal ways to obtain a contradiction. Uh, omega rule or uniform uh, Yablo disquotation. And how does it transfer to uh, finitism? First, uh, the, the, the framework that I uh, announced, uh, I will now try to, to, to briefly formalize and, and present. How, how, how do we formalize this idea of potential infinity here? So we start with a relational arithmetical language. And in this part of the talk, the fact that the language is relational is simply for convenience, because with function symbols in finite models, anybody uh, of you who did some finite model theory will know that uh, it's uncomfortable to have functions in, in, in finite models, because instead of simply not having a tuple in a particular relation uh, to, to, to make a function symbol, to make an interpretation of a function symbol a function, you have to deal with a lot of unnecessary uh, technical technical uh, stuff. So take a relational arithmetical language and I will introduce the finite model domains. So take the standard uh, model of arithmetic and the finite model domain of the standard model is a series, is a sequence of approximations uh, to the standard model by its finite initial segments. So it is a list of finite models such that each finite model as a universe <coughs> up to isomorphism has the numbers from zero up to n minus one. So its universe is uh, of, of power n. And you've got the interpretation of uh, addition, multiplication, zero, successor, and the ordering taken all as relations. So, you, uh, so basically addition is a ternary relation, multiplication as well. Successor is a, a, a relation in, in, in two variables, and you simply restrict the interpretation of those relations to the finite universe containing n, n numbers in this, in, in, this, in this context. And having such a sequence of uh, finite approximations to the infinite standard model, you can define what it means for an arithmetical sentence to be true in the world that is finite, but that can always be uh, bigger. So that is potentially infinite. So we are defining the uh, theory of FM domain uh, for the, the, with an with a abbreviation SL standing for sufficiently large. So we're, we're basically defining what it means for an arithmetical sentence to be true in the limit uh, in the FM domain. So in finite models, in finite points of the FM domain, 
the satisfaction is defined in a standard way. Uh, and uh, you additionally define what it means for a sentence to be true in the limit, as I say, or to be SL true. So a sentence phi is SL true in the FM domain over some model, in this case, over the standard model N, if and only if from some moment on, so from some index M, for any K higher than M, or for any K at least M, NK uh, satisfies phi. So in other words, a sentence is true in the limit if from some moment on it is true in every uh, finite uh, initial segment of uh, natural numbers, right? And the uh, SL theory of the FM domain of natural numbers is simply the set of sentences uh, that are SL, uh, SL true. Okay, and now if we want to add the truth predicate to uh, entire story, then we simply uh, uh, redefine the FM domains so that the initial segments, the approximations to them to the standard to the standard model, contain uh, one subset of the universe at the particular point in the FM domain that serves as a set of Gödel numbers of sentences that are true in the mm, uh, in in this particular point and the numbers of which can be can 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 be actually packed uh, in the uh, in the universe right so you take one particular subset of the universe of the k approximation in the fm domain uh, and it serves as an interpretation of truth of truth predicate why you even can do it well uh, it has been proven by by martin mostowski that you still have uh, representability of syntax uh, in the limit in this framework uh, you still have Tarski's theorem on undefinability of truth and uh, 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 the diagonal lemma uh, still SL holds in the FM domains. And uh, additionally, you can prove that in the, in the limits for any uh, FM domain with uh, uh, this interpretation of truth predicate, uh, also uh, you've got the provable, provable existence of the Abdo formula. So, for any natural number, uh, finite model uh, domain with the interpretation of truth predicate in the limit satisfies the equivalence between y of n and what we expect y of n to express. That for any x with x higher than n, y of x is not, uh, not true. Uh, and now in this framework, apart from, apart from many interesting arithmetical and computational and model theoretic uh, properties that this framework exhibits, uh, you can also prove something about Yablo sentences in this context that is slightly different from you have in formalized axiomatic first order theories with the truth predicate that I presented at the beginning. Uh, and the two results that I want to mention are as follows. So uh, first of all, if you have any class of finite models, so uh, in particular for the uh, sequence of approximation to the standard uh, model of arithmetic, if uh, this class of models taken as a finite, do finite model domain in the limit satisfies the arithmetical disquotation and Yablo disquotation, then all the standard Yablo sentences are false in the limit, which means that basically in potentially infinite domain, uh, domains, uh, if if there is uh, a potentially infinite domain that satisfies in the limit the this quotation schemes, then simply you can say that Yablo sentences are all false and there is no paradox and there's nothing wrong about it. Uh, so in in a sense, a weak finitist might say that there is no paradox such as such as Yablo's paradox simply. And the reason for that is that basically the standard argument for uh, y of n being uh, the being false in the in the limit is S in the natural language uh, standard uh, argument. So S in the first part of deriving the uh, deriving the paradox uh, in in natural language. And uh, additionally, uh, for this theorem not to be uh, trivially true, uh, you need to show that there is an FM domain that satisfies the discotation schemes in the in the limit. 
but that's actually easy because at each point in a, in a standard FM domain, uh, take uh, the interpretation of the truth predicate simply to contain uh, the codes of uh, the, all the existing codes of true arithmetical formulae uh, in, in this particular finite initial segments. And additionally, one code of the uh, Yablo sentence with the highest uh, Gödel number, obviously under the assumption that Gödel numbering is, is monotone. Uh, right, then this last code uh, is always vacuously, uh, vacuously true. So there is an FM domain satisfying this. And in this FM domain in particular, all the standard Yablo sentences are simply, uh, simply, do, simply do, not, do not hold. Uh, right, the cost of it is that in the SL theory as, so in, in some sense, the omega, the omega inconsistency strikes back and you might think that it strikes back in the same way that it attacked uh, the consistent theory containing uh, Yablo sentences in the, in the axiomatic framework from the from the first part, uh, because the reason for that is that each particular Yablo sentence, uh, not is SL fails, but simply SL fails, uh, so fails in the limit, but at each finite point, the last Yablo sentence uh, is satisfied, right? It holds because there are no bigger guys that would be in the interpretation of the of the truth predicate among all the Yablo sequences that we can we can refer to in the in a particular finite point. But it is always the case that there exists uh, an x such that y of x holds, right? So for each n, not y of n, but there exists an x such that y of x. So that's exactly omega inconsistency. Yet it's 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 basically uh, not a reminiscence. It's it's only a resemblance to 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 Yablo paradox here because the uh, the fact is that in this in this framework in this formalization of uh, the idea of potential infinity, uh, omega inconsistency uh, always m makes its own its own way because for for example for any natural number n. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, the phrase the formula uh, phi of n saying that n is the greatest number, then obviously in the limit it will fail because from some moment on, there will be always numbers that are bigger than n in all the initial segments of the, uh, of the standard, uh, standard model, yet there is always the greatest number in every finite model. So in every finite model, in every element of the finite model domain, in every point of it, uh, the, the, the following sentence is always true. There exists an X such that X is the biggest number, right? It is true in uh, N1, N100, N2 million, and so on and so forth. So this is the reason why omega inconsistency always comes back. And uh, Rafał had this idea to try to interpret quantifiers uh, in a, uh, somewhat modal way. So try to apply accessibility relation to FM domains. And in the case of, uh, of uh, in, the, in the general uh, case of model, of, the, of models of some, of some theory, you simply say that N is accessible from N if N is a submodel of N. And for the FM domain of the standard model of arithmetic, this basically boils down to stating that N, N, an n is accessible from an m if and only if n is no bigger than uh, than uh, than n because uh, under this assumption in the relational language you have the submodel relation between those two those two structures and uh, having this idea of uh, incorporating accessibility relation let's try to form formalize formulate and then formalize modal semantics uh, for uh, for this language. So if phi is an atomic formula, then the modal satisfaction of phi in some uh, family of models together with the distinguished point at which we are evaluating the formula phi uh, is simply standard satisfaction of phi. Keep the uh, Boolean connectives uh, as, uh, as as you might think they should be. And then with the quantifiers, uh, uh, the, the first the, the find, define them in the following way. In the domain at the particular point, uh, existential statement is modally 
true if, as, uh, as you might imagine in the model language, if there is some accessible point n, accessible from m, having a witness inside of it such that uh, the same domain with, another, with, this other, with this accessible distinguished point modally satisfies phi with a substituted for x uh, in every occurrence of x in the formula uh, in the formula phi. So in the context of <coughs> finite model domains, this might be something like uh, existential statement, there exists an x such that phi of x is modally true at a particular point if the world could be as big as to have a witness for, uh, for phi. And uh, dually, uh, for all x, phi of x will modally hold uh, if, and, if and only if uh, the, the, the world, however, however big the world would be, phi of x would always hold for all possible witnesses uh, to, uh, to, to phi. And then uh, the modal uh, theory of the limit of a particular uh, finite model domain in this case, the finite model domain of the standard model of, uh, uh, of arithmetic would be the set of sentences such that from some moment on, so for sufficiently large natural numbers, uh, phi is modally satisfied at a, a particular sufficiently large point uh, in, the, uh, in the, the surrounding domain uh, fm uh, of n. Now, an example for that would be exactly the sentence that I already mentioned. So the sentence expressing the fact that X uh, is the, is a, a, a sentence expressing the fact that there, is, there exists uh, a maximal element with respect to the uh, standard ordering. So such that there exists an X such that for all Y, X is higher than Y. As we, as we argued, it is, uh, such a sentence uh, is uh, true in the limit in the standard FM domain, yet it is not true in the model uh, SL theory of the finite model uh, domain. The reason for that is this would be true uh, in, in, at a particular point if at a particular point uh, uh, M, uh, there would be an accessible, i.e. bigger world and the witness A in this world such that for all y, y uh, a bigger than y would be true in this world. But then this part of the sentence would be true about a in this particular accessible world, if and only if for every world accessible from this, uh, from this bigger model, for any witness in uh, all of those bigger models, this particular fixed a would be bigger than uh, all those potential witnesses. And this is not true because basically the, if, you, if you stick to the witness A in the bigger model, then obviously the world could be bigger enough to make A not the maximal element. So basically what, what, what I'm trying to say is trying to justify uh, the fact that it is much more natural to have this modal uh, interpretation of uh, satisfaction for, uh, for, for the very same, in a sense, ontological framework of FM domain to, to try to express the idea of potential infinity. Uh, if we want to think about quantifiers uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, as ranging over, uh, over finite points in the FM domain, but also be able to express the uh, the fact that the world could be as big as to satisfy this or that sentence with this or that particular particular weakness. Okay, and now uh, a, a, a nice theorem actually. Uh, so uh, uh, first, the, the message here was that this SL theory of the FM domain, however tempting uh, these, uh, this uh, expression of uh, potential infinity might, might be, uh, it has some pathological uh, elements, right? The, you, you shouldn't have uh, a, 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 as, an, as an element of your arithmetical theory the fact that there exists the biggest natural number. Uh, and when quantifiers are interpreted modally in the, uh, in the SL theory of uh, FM domains, then what you obtain uh, is the standard true arithmetic. So you recover the natural arithmetic with sticking to finitistic 
uh, ontology, so to say. And the reason for that is that you still have a submodel relation for the f uh, f initial segments of um, of the of the standard of the standard model. The quantifier free formulas are preserved uh, for uh, all the uh, constants at a at, at a given point. And then if you have an existential statement that is true in the standard model, then it has a witness. And then this witness belongs to some finite point F and if it is a witness in N, then it will be a witness uh, in all uh, initial segments in the, in the model sense. So basically by uh, an inductive proof, uh, the, the, you can recover true arithmetic for the, uh, Model theory of sentences that are true in the limit, uh, in the uh, in the uh, in 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 the family of finite models approximating a given model. So, uh, what we've done is we've we've recovered what is the right uh, setting for a potential uh, uh, this potential infinity uh, weak finitism uh, instead of the original idea, and then a, a question about Diablo. Uh, comes back, how do Yablo sentences and sequences of sentences behave under this semantics in finite model domains? And the, uh, the answer is that if you assume, uh, if, if, you, if you have Yablo disquotation that are modally true in the limit in your uh, FM domain with the truth predicate that can, uh, that such that the truth predicate can also refer to not only arithmetical sentences, but also sentences that contain truth, the truth predicates such as Yablo sentences, then uh, as perhaps expected for any standard natural number, Y of N cannot be in the model theory uh, of the limit uh, uh, of, 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 the, of, the, of the sentences modally true in sufficiently large elements of the, of the FM domain. And uh, a corollary to that, which is basically the main, uh, the main, uh, the main result there, is that you cannot then have uh, an FM domain with an appropriate interpretation of the truth predicate, such that it would uh, contain even the weakest disquotation scheme uh, for uh, for Yablo sentences. So even the local disquotation scheme for Yablo se uh, sentences, you cannot have such a you cannot find such a domain that uh, Yablo disquotation in the local version, in this weakest version, would be would be included in the modal uh, SL theory of your uh, of your domain. And the reason the reason for that is that as, assume it would be the case. So let me give you a sketch of a sketch of a proof. Uh, so suppose suppose otherwise by the by the theorem here and unraveling what it means that Y of n cannot be in the MSL. Uh, theory uh, for any y of n. It simply means that mm, for any index L that there will be a uh, higher index of a world in the FM domain such that uh, the world with the, the finite model, the fi a finite point with this index K will not modally satisfy uh, y of n, uh, assuming, uh, assuming the, 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 the disquotation. Now by the uh, uh, by the by the by the provable equivalence of Yablo sentences. So, uh, in other words, by what I call the existence of Yablo sentences, this basically, in the framework of model semantics, boils down to this crazy condition under which, for any n and l, there will be an index p higher than l and a witness higher than n in this NP such that NP will modally, sa will modally satisfy the fact that Y of A is actually true. Uh, again, by Yablo disquotation, we can take off the, tr the truth predicate from, from the same sentence. And then by uh, fixing N and L to be zero, then we can see that we've got some P and A such that for all Q bigger than P, so for all finite models, with an index higher than uh, than uh, than this witnessed p, uh, it is modally satisfied that for all x above a y of x is not is not true. But then, if you if you if you pick a witness higher than zero, then it will mean that y of a 
right? This is exactly what y of a expresses, that y of a is modally, tr modally SL true, but we've just said that uh, y of n cannot be modally SL true for any standard n. So this is, this is a, uh, a contradiction. So I, I presented this sketch of an argument to, uh, to, to display the interplay between the probable existence of Yablo sentences in this, uh, in this setting and the local Yablo disquotation and the unraveling of the content of Yablo sentences with respect to the modal, uh, modal semantics that we impose on the, uh, on the potential infinity, infinity framework. Therefore, in some way, uh, there, is, there is a contradiction again because you cannot find an interpretation for even local Yablo disquotation, right? So in some sense, and this, this makes a compositional closure to the first part of the talk, in the usual classical axiomatic first order setting, you had a conclusion that, well, yeah, the natural language reasoning, uh, with, we are able to recover the natural language reasoning uh, if we uh, have some stronger assumptions on the truth predicate or if we use some stronger infinitary uh, reasoning, because if we use first order reasoning and we only have weak truth theoretic assumptions imposed on sentences that can contain truth predicate, then there is no contradiction. There is no paradox in the Yablo sequence uh, formalized as a set of objects in, in, our, in our theory. Yet here in this uh, uh, dialectically worked out right setting for expressing the idea of potential infinity, uh, the paradox, uh, the, despite the fact that it might seem that the finitist might not have a problem with the paradox, when properly phrased, finitist sees that Yablo paradox is even more problematic because you cannot even have a theory that contains this weak disquotation scheme as a true theoretic assumption uh, for the behavior of Yablo, uh, Yablo sentences, right? Because you don't have domains such that uh, the, this weak disquotation for Yablo uh, is contained in your, uh, in, in, uh, in your uh, SL, SL theory. So, uh, local arithmetical and Yablo disquotation are consistent but omega inconsistent. If you add an omega rule or uniform Yablo disquotation, you get an inconsistency back again. Uh, if you uh, are sympathetic to this uh, nice idea of uh, uh, the, the, the potential infinity for uh, particular theoretical uh, foundational goals for arithmetic, then all the Yablo sentences are false. And the SL theory of uh, your finite model domain is consistent, but again, omega inconsistent since the, even if you don't consider Yablo, then your theory SL of FM, uh, your SL theory of the uh, FM domain of N is omega inconsistent. But under better semantics, even if you add local arithmetical and local Yablo disputation, you already get an inconsistency. So we don't even have to look at uniform Yablo disputation or uh, omega rule. So uh, a kind of deeper information uh, about the Yablo sequences and the paradoxicality of the entire object that I said at the beginning that the finitist might hope for in the context of uh, this modal semantics instead of taking the standard uh, SL semantics is actually, actually uh, goes actually completely the other way around than expected. It's, it's even worse for such a well-phrased finitist to consider Yablo, uh, Yablo uh, sequences and I've got yet another another thing, although it's it's already five p.m. But if you can give me five to ten minutes, uh, then I would I would like to add one more thing that is a little bit more general than uh, the considerations concerning Yablo paradox, because under this uh, modal SL uh, semantics, uh, uh, as as we saw the uh, modal SL theory of the finite model domain is simply true arithmetic. So uh, some people expressed objection that, well, if under this SL semantics, after you take the model interpretation of quantifiers, you end up with the standard uh, true arithmetic in the standard model, then where's, where's your finitism? You're not a finitist, you're a hidden actualist. 
it's not it's not potentialism uh, uh, anymore. You are actually doing true arithmetic, true arithmetic, uh, and uh, just cheating that uh, you are using any kind of finitistic uh, intuitions. So the question that I just uh, just reported on, if uh, for the first order language, uh, what we get in the limit under this semantics is simply true arithmetic, then uh, isn't this entire theory simply some kind of syntactic uh, sugar and that we are cheating and uh, simply uh, uh, we, we, are, we, are, uh, we are living in a structure that we cheated that we wanted to only approximate. So the, the answer uh, to that that I would like to, uh, to give is that actually uh, on the on the level of first order language, uh, the fact that the MSL theory of the FM domain is simply true arithmetic simply vindicates using a kind of infinitistic idealization, uh, even for a finitist who wants to do first order uh, theory. So if a finitist comes and the, di the dialectics go as follows, so. The, the world is always finite, even though it might be always made larger. So even if it is uh, potentially infinite, it is actually finite. So let's do a theory of the world as it actually looks like and not of, of this idealization. Then we can reply, well, okay, if you take the right interpretation of quantifiers, then you can keep your finitistic ontology uh, and you can simply do normal infinitary arithmetic being an infinitist because this infinitary, uh, in, infinitistic arithmetic is still vindicated within your finitism by the fact that with the right interpretation of quantifiers, by the model interpretation of quantifiers, the theory of your potentially infinite finite world is uh, that the, the theory is still true arithmetic, yet there is obviously a difference on the ontological level, but the, an interesting thing is that the difference is visible not on the level of first of the theory of the uh, uh, of the domain you are considering, but at the level of the second order language. So, if in the model semantics we uh, allow uh, satisfaction for second order formulae, and the we range not only over uh, the uh, universe of each point uh, in the finite model approximations, but also to the power set then the uh, stuff that is true about subsets of the domains of uh, finite points in the FM domain, uh, the, 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 those things will, will, have a different, will, will have a different theory. So uh, the formulae that will be true in the second order language under M semantics will be the ones where the second order quantifiers are taken to range over finite, finite sets, so formally. Uh, if we have the power set of the uh, of the finite k, uh, k element set, then in our semantics for the uh, model interpretation of, of quantifiers in the uh, uh, theory for potential infinity, we add the second order quantifications and we say that existential second order statement is modally satisfied at a given point if there exists some larger, i.e. accessible domain, uh, and the witness in the power set of this bigger domain such that phi of a is true in this this higher uh, this uh, this this point with a with a higher index. And now extend the definition of the MSL theory, uh, and then uh, since we still have that for uh, k smaller than n, uh, the uh, Kth element universe together with the power set of this universe is still a submodel of the uh, n element universe with the power set of the n element universe. We actually have that the MSL theory of this second order uh, extended language for the FM domain of natural numbers uh, with uh, with a uh, with a power set uh, is exactly equivalent to the theory of n together with uh, in the family of finite subsets of natural numbers. So in other words, what is uh, true in the limit in the modal sense of quantifiers in second order language is exactly what is true in the actual standard model together with the visibility of only finite, uh, finite sets. So 
second order theory of potentially infinite finite uh, domains uh, is exactly the place at which you see the difference in ontology. So although your infinitistic arithmetic is vindicated on the level of your first order uh, con considerations, it is not the case that you are doing synty syntactic sugar. It is the case that your assumption concerning finitism in your ontology is simply of higher order. And uh, that's, that's, that's basically the, uh, a, a philosophical import that is much more general than considerations on the Apple paradox that we ended up uh, with after uh, trying trying to do some work on 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 Diablo paradox that this uh, the the analysis of uh, finitism and potential infinity uh, via analysis of Diablo paradox led to conclusion uh, that uh, finitism per se uh, is visible on the second order uh, second order uh, uh, level yet at the first order one the semantics vindicates doing infinitary, uh, sorry, infinitistic simple arithmetic, even for a uh, for a for a finitist. So, in some sense, the framework also refutes any kind of finitistic approach that is somehow revisionary to traditional arithmetic. So, what we say is, come on, first order arithmetic, such as in as in PA or in uh, true arithmetic or or something even stronger. Uh, that's that's uh, the, the that that's okay even if you are a finitist you you cannot say that the first of the theory of arithmetic should be changed if you have a finitistic uh, finitistic inclinations there will still be a difference but only if you look at the second order uh, uh, theory of your uh, of your natural numbers with the with the right semantics yet obviously the second order, and so this is, uh, we, are, we, we do not wish to say that we somehow defend the finitism. It is basically external viewpoint analysis because some people are sympathetic to the, uh, to, to the, to the idea that infinity is a kind of only of uh, idealization. What we want to say here is that still under this expression of finitism, the second order MSL theory is very restrictive in the sense that it is even weaker than uh, theories resulting from uh, some predicativist uh, inclinations. That, then this is an, a remark that I do not wish to get uh, more, more into, uh, but a remark that I would like to almost end the talk uh, with. Uh, so that's a beautiful library of Ghent uh, University. And this is something that Rafał had an idea that expresses uh, potential infinity and Diablo paradox uh, uh, in, uh, at, at once because we have a finite sequence of finite books. And apparently, obviously, each one is saying that all the ones behind them are, are false. And perhaps the last one is right or isn't. And the, that's, that's, uh, that's it. So uh, thank you so much for for your attention and for your patience. Thank you.